To buy or not to buy? That is the question. Hey guys, thanks for tuning back in. Today I'm channeling my inner Shakespeare when we talk about the market and I'm going to dive right in. So I'm going to talk about the key indicators that help us understand, is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? Should I wait? What should I do? The challenge is, is there's no right or wrong answer, ladies and gentlemen. You really have to kind of dive deep into your motivation and really understand the numbers around what you want and what you're trying to achieve to be able to make the best decision for yourself and your family. And that's what we do at the Robert Mack Group. We sit down with our clients and we go through and explore different options to figure out, is now the right time to make this move or should we wait? And that's really the question on everyone's minds. Right now, a lot of our clients are saying, hey, you know what, should we sell? Is it the right time? Can we get the best price or should we buy? Should we wait until rates go lower? It's pretty tough, so let's dive into the numbers. Number one, let's talk about interest rates and affordability overall. The bottom line here is interest rates are at a 23 year high, hovering in the low sevens. There's actually speculation that those rates might even go higher as the year approaches its end. Now, what these rates are doing, it's creating a very unaffordable time for the average buyer. No, I didn't say every buyer, but the average buyer. Right now, we're at a four decade low for affordability. So what that's doing is uh, it's taking longer for homes to sell, right? Even though we have a super low inventory right now, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, homes in general are just taking longer to sell. And that's because buyers are questioning whether or not it's the right time to buy. Buyers are becoming extremely picky and selective with what they're willing to spend money on because they're realizing that they have to spend at the top of their budget to make it happen. And so we're seeing a slight disconnect now between what homeowners are listing their properties for and what they're actually selling for as affordability is a challenge and as we approach a slower time of the year, the holiday season. So what is the active inventory levels right now? Where are we at, right? Because everything's based on supply and demand. So right now we're sitting at about 2,300 homes available in the entire county of Orange. I've made videos around how small of a number this is. If you think about the different cities in Orange County, how big it is, and you think about condos versus townhomes versus condos versus a three bedroom versus a one bedroom, um, you know, you really start to dissect and find that every area, every community may have zero to three options. There are very few areas of Orange County that are saturated with too much inventory. But the bottom line is right now we have about 2,300 homes available for sale. That's down about 100 homes from last month. And just to give you perspective on the big picture, in 2019, pre-pandemic, we had 7,000 homes available for sale in the entire county, and that was also considered a low inventory season. Our running three-year average pre-pandemic is about 6,000 homes. So we're hovering around 60 to 65% less homes than we should have on the market for two reasons. We've talked about this. The two biggest reasons are most homeowners don't want to lose their sub 5% interest rate. And the secondary reason is because there's not a lot of inventory on the buy side, most homeowners are like, I can't even buy what I want after I sell, so I might as well stay put. So that low inventory is creating a high demand because there's low supply, but the interest rates are counteracting that demand because it's putting a lot of pressures on the buyers to be able to afford their monthly payment. So when you ask yourself, should I transact? Here's some advice I have for buyers and for sellers. Now look, I'm gonna keep it real easy. If you're a seller, the bottom line is, is buyers buy based on emotion. You will get more money for your property if buyers fall in love and create an emotional connection with your home. So how your home shows, how it's perceived is extremely important. What's even more important is how it's priced because you can have the most beautiful property on the planet, but if it's overpriced, buyers are gonna see right through that. So pricing is extremely critical. Now, if you say, Robert, I don't got a home that's beautiful. I don't have a home that sparks an emotional connection. Then make sure you compensate with the price. Price the home accordingly. Price the home based on its current condition. If it's a stunner, a 10 out of 10, price it at the top. If it needs a lot of work, if it's a project, if it needs to be decluttered or there's a lot of maintenance or repairs required, maybe you price it lower to create an incentive for buyers to say, hey, I'm willing to pay this much money. Even though it's a project, there's opportunity here. But the bottom line is if you're a seller, don't overprice. Price within market value or better yet, price it slightly more aggressively because we are going into a slower time of the year. And then obviously do your best to showcase your home in its best light. 
for buyers out there, I completely understand how challenging of a time it is. The biggest comment we're getting from people that we're working with is, is Robert, we're just going to wait for rates to fall. Here's what's going to happen. If the rates fall, everyone's going to flood the market and you're going to create so much competition with yourself that homes are going to sell for more than what they're asking for again. So if you can find a way to stomach the payment and buy the property now, knowing that you may not be able to refinance for some time, but knowing that refinancing could be an option in the near future, if you can afford that monthly payment, then what happens is, is as the market gets better and the rates start to stabilize or come down, you may have the opportunity to refinance, but you've already bought your home pre the buying surge because you got it at a time where most people didn't want to buy. That's the trick here, ladies and gentlemen. If you're doing what everyone's doing, you're following the crowd, you're going to, you know, I read an article the other day that 70% of homeowners that bought in 2021 and 2022 have regrets in some fashion around either making too quick of a decision to buy, buying too much of a house, not getting what they wanted. The bottom line is people settled in that hot market. So if you wait for rates to fall, that hot market could create an opportunity for you to settle. So that's what I've got for you today. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, show me some social media love, share this video, like this video, comment on this video. Let's interact. If you're thinking about buying or selling, let me or someone on my team help you come to the best decision possible. Thank you so much for your time, your support, and I'll talk to you next time.